Now for our story. Aunt Mary Lane stood in the window of the dentist's office, watching Nicholas Dorn cut across the street with his long stride. He'd left her a moment before, after a very revealing conversation, in which he'd told her how he'd felt about Peggy Douglas, Aunt Mary's niece. Told her that he wanted to marry Peggy, even though he said calmly that he didn't love her. He wanted to buy a little place in Wakefield and settle down, live a quiet, peaceful life. But Aunt Mary was fearful of the plan he had in mind for Peggy. She was certain that Peggy hadn't forgotten all about Bill Mead, even though she liked to think she had. And yet, Nicholas was a fine young man. <laughs> oh, that boy. Look at him loping across the street. His hair all tousled. No hat, as usual. Guess they don't wear them in Hollywood. It was nice of him to be so honest with me. Tell me how he felt. He's a good boy. I do hope he and Peggy won't do anything foolish. They have this notion simply because they're lonely. Hurt. I wonder if I made him understand. A marriage without love would be a terrible mistake. He doesn't seem to realize that intellectual understanding, as he calls it, is no substitute for love. Love is, is instinctive, spiritual, more a part of your soul than your mind. Then Nicholas disappeared from view, went through the door of the hotel toward the coffee shop. But as he started across the lobby, Peggy came through the swinging doors on her way out. Excuse me, ma'am, but I'm working my way through college, and I wondered if you'd like a subscription. Why, Nicholas, what on earth? <laughs> Aunt Mary told me I'd find you over here. Oh, you saw her? Yes, I left over in Dr. Barnes' office. I hoped I'd be able to buy your lunch. Well, I'm sorry, but I, I've just had it. Mm, and how about a second one for dessert? No, no, thank you. Besides, I have a few things to do. You mean you're trying to fluff me off? No, of course not, Nicholas. But I... Well, you you're what? Oh, nothing. Well, Peggy, something the matter? You look a little pale around the edges. I probably do. That's the way I feel. Peggy, I, I'm awfully sorry. Is there something I can do? Just name it, I... No, Nicholas. I'm afraid there's nothing anybody can do. Well, anyway, let's go somewhere and sit down where we can talk. All right. Well, wait a minute. Why not right here in the lobby? That'll be all right. Right over here by the window? Mm, this is fine. <sighs> now, tell me, what's put that worried, unhappy look on your face? Oh, I don't know. Probably wouldn't seem like much to you. Uh -huh. Tell me about it and let me decide. It's just that... Oh, I wish people would mind their own business. Why is it when you do everything you can to forget something, to put it behind you, people seem to take a perverse delight in bringing it up, reminding you about it? That's just the way some people are. Who's been needling you this morning? Of course, could be she didn't do it on purpose. Who? Jessie Ward. Only her name is Jessie Calvert now. Is she the one who was Ben Calvert's secretary before they were married? That's right. She's been working for him for years. Nobody ever thought he'd finally marry her. Well, what did that vixen do to upset you? Oh, it was just something she said. Look, why don't you give me the whole story from the beginning? I feel like the prosecuting attorney worming it out of you like this. Well, I'll try. At first we just talked about nothing special. And then she said something about how hard it is to buy anything these days. So I asked her what she was looking for, and... She said she was redecorating the wing of their house on 11th Street. Is that significant? She said she was fixing it up for Kit when she comes back. Oh, now we're getting somewhere. So Mrs. Bill Mead is coming home. I'm not sure, because then Jessie said that she'd seen Kit in California, and she... Well, Jessie didn't think she was coming home after all. Well, I should think that would cheer you up. It even cheers me up. Well... Jesse didn't seem to be positive about that. But the main thing was... Go on. Then I asked her if Kit did come home, if she and Bill would be living in the house there, in Ben Calvert's house. Yeah? What did she say? 
She said no. That even if Kit came back, she thought Bill would go on living at the auto court. Alone. That all? That's all she said? Why, yes. You mean to say that's why you look as if you've just seen a ghost? Well, I wasn't asking for sympathy, Nicholas. Just that I, I don't understand it. But I don't see what difference it makes. It's nothing to you where Mead is living. Let him live wherever he pleases. You needn't sound so vicious about I'm it. I'm not vicious. I'm just a little disappointed, that's all. Hey, you tell me that Bill Mead doesn't mean a thing to you, that it's all finished. Yet you can't even hear his name mentioned without going into a tailspin. Well, what about you? You got a letter from Julie and you brooded about it for days. I did not. Anyway, supposing I had, it's quite a difference. For one thing, Julie's free. She's not all involved in some messy... How can you talk that way, Nicholas? You don't even know Bill. Lucky me. Nick, do you realize what's happened? We've been... We actually have been quarreling. I know. Look, Peggy, you and I have all the makings for a good life together. We could make each other happy. I'm, I'm sure of it. Why can't we put all this Mead Julie business out of our minds for once and for all? Well, Nick, are you sure you can do it? I could with your help, Peggy. And I could help you. I don't know. Maybe you're right. You see, Peggy, the trouble is nothing ever ends cleanly. Because in these emotional setups, there's, there's always one person who isn't ready to finish it, who wants to hang on. Like Julie? Well, she's an example, yes. But we wouldn't be like that. If one of us decided to call it a deal, why, that would be that. There wouldn't be any wringing of hands. No, of course not. Oh, but anyway, I don't think we'd ever reach that point. We'd have no reason to, because we'd be happy. We'd know where we stood with each other. That would be wonderful. To know where you stood with a person. That's what I'm so tired of, so discouraged about. The uncertainty. One day one thing, and next time something completely different. It's... You can't ever relax. You're always worried, confused. The old merry-go-round. It's not for us anymore, Peggy. We've had our ride on it, and we managed to get off without any serious injuries. Maybe a few bruises, but... Oh, Peggy, let's be smart. Let's prove that you can beat this game. I'd like to, Nick, but can we be sure? Well, after all, what have we got to lose? If we don't do it, if we just coast along our separate ways, ten to one, we'll wind up with another pair of headaches. Why take the chance? I certainly don't want ever to get into that sort of a situation again. Of course you don't, Peggy. And neither do I. Nick, do you still plan to buy a place here in Wakefield? Well, that all depends, Peggy. On me? Yes, of course. As I told you the other day, I wouldn't even attempt it by myself. Oh, it's such a big step. <laughs> Funny. That's what Aunt Mary said. And now I'm quoting her. Your Aunt Mary isn't entirely sold on the idea, is she? No, but Aunt Mary never interferes with me. She tries to help me decide things sensibly, but if I make a decision, if I'm sure, she stands by me. Well, Peggy... What's the verdict? I wish you wouldn't sound as if this is a trial or something. It is a trial. A trial of ideals. All right, Nick. I'll do it. I will. I promise you won't be sorry. I hope not. Well, we'll start making plans right away. And, and shouldn't we tell Aunt Mary, Lefty, we want to do this thing properly? No, Nicholas. L let's not talk about it to anyone for the time being. No one at all. Yes, I, I guess you're right. We're sure, we know, but well, other people don't understand. We don't want them interfering. Interference, though, is just what is needed for these two young people. Some intervention which will avoid their making a mistake which might make with them both very unhappy. Because in California, Kit Mead is planning to return to Wakefield. And Kit's return will free Bill from his promise not to see Peggy Douglas or explain to her during his wife's absence. If only you'd wait, Peggy. There's still time for you to reconsider your promise to Nicholas Dorn. If only you won't be too hasty. <laughs> <laughs> 